What is going on, 5'9 Gamers? My name is Vilify. I have with me today three guests. Their names are Minato, Gail Riot, and Joe Wags. Today we are going to be talking about the newest Dokkan Fest to hit JP Dokkan, and that Dokkan Fest is Raditz. Now, Raditz, as you all know, probably know, as you all probably know, is objectively speaking, just not up to the standard that Dokkan has set for the game over the last few months. As we all know by now, Power Creep exists in this game, and Raditz feels like he is months, if not years, behind the units that are released in his time frame. A prime example being his own banner unit, Nappa. He is head and shoulders above what Raditz is as a unit, and this should not be the case when a new Dokkan Fest is released. The incentive to summon is just not there with this poor performance, and Raditz on the top grossing chart has indicated this. Players are not incentivized to summon, as he is the worst performing Dokkan Fest of all time. We want to talk about how this impacts the bigger picture of the game, and to back this up, I have someone who did a lot of good research on this topic, and he'll go ahead and give you all the data you need to know about this ever-controversial unit, and his name is Minato. Go ahead and take it away. You know, what if I don't? <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> okay, anyways, <laughs> jokes of side gamers, hello. So we do have uh, Dokkan Fest Reddit and his basically stats I did on the App Store. So just a pure clear picture about it. Raditz did peak at 17 on the iOS App Store in Japan, right? Which uh, at a glance, you may be thinking, that's okay, right? You know, there's some games that dip lower than that. And sometimes, you know, not every game is supposed to have a max performance. However, like Vilify did say, we do have a precedent set for how Dokkan does rank. Um, if we take a look at last year, for example, no Dokkan Fest TUR last year went under rank 8 as top grossing right the lowest was kid gohan and super vegeta with both hit their peak at number eight in the app store which they're both before really big celebrations right um this time raditz hit an all-time low in terms of every single dokkan fest that ever released the previous lowest peak that a dokkan fest had was tech beerus back in 2016 which even then his peak hit was 13 and back then, it was obviously, just a whole different, like, you know, situation in terms of the gotcha games out and stuff like that. But Raditz doing this low in when now Dokkan already has basically set in stone that they're going to hit at least top 10 for these Dokkan Fest banners is pretty horrible. Mm -hmm. He has also, in fact, done worse than every single Yellow Coin LR banner that has debuted in LR. That also would kind of include those two times rates banners that, like, say, when Int Super Saiyan 2 Gohan is featured, Ajo Manj Vegeta, every single banner like that that debuted in LR, Summonable 1, did better than this Raditz. Even Tapia Minosha, which hit 11, Goku and Piccolo hit 13, Raditz is at an all time low, and some of those banners didn't even have sales, right? So that's a huge issue. Uh, there's really probably a lot of reasons why that we're going to talk about in this video and how this impacts the game. So I'm going to hand it over to Gail right here. We have Gail right, of course, and I want to kind of hear your thoughts on this situation, Gail. What are you thinking? I mean, it's uh, obviously not a good thing that it is not in the top 10. I mean, like you said, right, we've come to a point where it's we may not get first place in the top grossing charts consistently anymore, right? Like we used to in like 2019, 2020 even. Uh, but there is a standard now that Dokkan will still be in the top 10 no matter what. And uh, with Raditz not even coming close to it, like 17th. I mean, I think you mentioned that in the game chart it was around 14th or 15th or something like that, right? At, at its peak, maybe 13th. So, go ahead. No, that was in the games category, yes, right? Yes, game mm -hmm. chart. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in terms of the games category, mm -hmm. yes. But in terms of overall, Raditz actually did worse than like... like for example, uh, a great ape rising carnival yeah. banner that came on like 2017. Mm. Raditz yeah. did worse than that banner. Yeah. Uh, the banners like that. Just so yeah, no, it's <laughs> it's not good enough. I mean, I kind of, I, I, I don't know if it was like, like we've discussed this on the podcast and stuff, right? We still don't know if it, this was a calculated decision from them and they were like, we'll take the hit right now. But even if you do take the hit, they, there were so many ways they could have probably boosted the sales for this unit. Had they just put a little bit of time, even just adjusting their the kit of the unit, which I understand they want to test out the unit and stuff like that. Hence why it takes them like six, seven months to prepare a unit for the most part, right? Even so, I would assume that they would have probably, you know, quickly just checked over, seen if it was the right thing to do. And especially this environment, the, ga the current game's environment, was it a smart thing to release this sort of a unit? And I mean... Based on the replies on Twitter from the Japanese community and then, of course, our community here on the global side, right? We're all just pretty much just like, why though? Why is this unit even a thing at this point, right? Because it's not mm -hmm. 
I, I personally believe it's not even a problem of it being Raditz. I think, obviously, he's not a hype character. But we've seen in the past, Videl, Ginyu, all of them aren't necessarily, like, the hype saying that we all want. But they've always done well. They've always been in the top 10 consistently when it comes to hitting the top grossing charts. Raditz doesn't match up with his kit. His kit is poor. He, he, is, he himself isn't the most hype character, leading to what is effectively a very low position in the rankings. So, yeah, it's not uh, it's not a really good look, in all honesty. Yeah, it, it definitely isn't really a good look, uh, unfortunately, for Dokkan right now. And, you know, we're kind of thinking these questions like, you know, how is this going to change the, how they release characters in the future that may not be hype, right? Is this going to set, like, a kind of trend for the future? Are they going to push Power Keep even more, you know? I know that... um. Joe, I kind of am interested to hear what you're thinking about that as well, right? Yeah, so I think for one, they made a few mistakes with this. One is, is the character's not very hype, and so they hit the double whammy by also making him bad. As Gail mentioned, we had characters like Videl, we had Ginyu, which aren't the hypest characters, but what Dokkan did well was they made the characters busted. If a character is busted and good, players don't care who the character is, they're going to run them. Um, mm -hmm. The other big mistake with this too is that Raditz isn't a guy who's going to get a lot of cards. So it's really sad because it's very rare that we're going to get a Raditz. We're probably never going to get another Dokkan Fest Raditz, which is really, really bad. I think even with Raditz as bad as he is, the other way they could have made more money is just put out more sales. I think a unit like PyCon shows that you can get, because I think PyCon may have gotten top grossing, if I remember right, or pretty close to it. And he's not the hypest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had Gogeta in the animation, but there was a lot of sales. And I think people will buy the sales always. Like I'm someone that... I buy all the sales. I don't care if I'm summoning or not. I buy the sales and I save for the banners I want. So, um, yeah, I think it is a bad... To me, this is kind of like a really oddball thing. Because I can't remember the last time they've released a Dokkan Fest this outright bad. Like, Dokkan has done done really well. It feels very rushed. I know we talked about it on the podcast, but I feel like it might be because they're trying to prep a big celebration in place of the movie celebration because they got to do something quick. But it's like... You know, we talked about earlier, you don't have to do much, just to, like just up his numbers. Like if Raditz, well, let's think about it hypo hypothetically. If you doubled all of Raditz's numbers, his defense definitely would be good. But even his attack set would still be just like average, even if you doubled it. So it's it, to me, it's just kind of weird. And it's very unlike Dokkan with all the power creep we're having to release this unit essentially from two years ago. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yeah, of course. Right. And it's like, <clears throat> again, I'm really thinking about, like, in the future, I feel like they really may start pushing Power Creep even more than even what we have seen. Seeing the actual performance of Raditz itself, it's obviously very low. We all know this at this point, right? Raditz really has an horrible. There's been many discussions. Everyone bad it's right, is mm -hmm. anything that people come up with. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, what, it, what kind of things do you think will come from this Rillify in terms of the future of the game? Um, I think this will speak to how they might become more scared to release these obscure Dokkan Fest, like we were talking about beforehand, how uh, when, like, uh, I think Jilla just said it, right? Videl, they make her busted and people are going to summon. And it was kind of the same thing with LR Turles, right? Where Turles isn't the most hyped character in the world, but when everybody saw his kit and everything beforehand, it's like, okay, I got a summon for this guy. And now those Dokkan Fest or summonable LRs might be even less common and we might be seeing more of what the people the claim to not like which is the more fusions thing which is kind of exhausted at this point but numbers don't lie right this is a business and double gogeta held them top grossing for multiple days which is almost unheard of these days now that especially in the gotcha scene where there is competition i won't mention the name but that game exists right they're always at the top of the charts and uh, you know it, it really is going to take a super hype celebration for us to even hit top grossing stuff like raditz going forward i don't know if it's going to work especially if they're no good so like I think it's it should go without saying that bad units just like no one cares about bad units, right? And when you do the double whammy, like Joe said, and it's a character that nobody really cares about, like Raditz, it's just it's just a it's a mess, right? So yeah, that's all I really got for you on that one. Yeah, and I mean at this point, I feel like we kind of discussed pretty well in terms of what essentially the issue was with Raditz. Mm -hmm. I would like to really know you guys in the comments below what your thoughts are on you know Raditz as the Dokkan Fest. And how you feel you this may impact the game, whether you feel they may be scared to release characters like this in the future. Maybe like Gail said, it was planned, right? Mm -hmm. you, you never know, right? Yeah. <laughs> this could be some tactical uh <laughs> like thinking that they're doing or so something we have no idea, right? Yeah. Maybe 
Maybe Raditz is good in five months. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, right now, right? It, it, anything can happen. Yeah. Yeah. If I can. I mean, the thing is also we have to remember as well. Sorry, I, I'll just. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Point. We have to remember. We have to remember. Golden Week is coming up as well. But the thing is as well, I I don't see that necessarily as a massive excuse either. To be quite honest, it is an excuse that you could use. I don't know if it's a really good one. To be quite honest. Because even the sales, if I'm not mistaken, Minato, you can probably tell me more about this because you play JP uh, more than I do. Uh, but the sales itself aren't really the greatest either, right? So they could have easily just put sales now and then put obviously more sales for Golden Week and they could have made bank. But the sales aren't even that good, right? No. Yeah, they're just a normal mm -hmm. sales, right? I mean, we had the exact same sales last year with Bedell. And you see the difference. Bedell was pretty good, right? Yeah. As Just her performance was very powerful. Well, as Radis right now is a Naromi. You see the big difference between them? You can make really comparisons, and I feel like as long as a character is busted like this, then it could probably sell well even without the greatest sales ever. Yeah, and I just wanted to jump in too really quick because me being the optimist kind of sees the good in this, and I think the good in this is it shows the developers that they can't just release a crap character and get away with it. So I'm hoping that this is the last time something like this happens. Because I, I don't think it necessarily would deter them from releasing a not hype character because they've seen it be successful with Ginyu and Videl. I think hopefully what they get from it is, hey, we've got to make the character actually better. And if they're paying attention, if yeah. they're watching YouTubers and they're seeing all the comments on Twitter, like it's not that we don't like Raditz. I think there's a lot of Raditz fans out there. Me being one, I've, I've always wanted a good Raditz, right? Now my only hope is when this guy gets an easy A or maybe like a Super Saiyan 3 Raditz for heroes or something, but like, I hope it shows them in the future, hey, when you're gonna release a character like this, you better take your time and make them good. And then you'll actually get the sales you deserve, right? So I think this is actually a mm -hmm. good take by the community to show them like, hey, we're not just gonna summon and buy stones for anything. Like it's showing that we, you know, care about the game and we actually want the characters to be good. We don't just summon for everything. So hopefully the optimist in me will be true and they just won't do this again. I like that point. Uh, one other thing I'd like to note is that like when we talked about it earlier, when we're when like on the discussion of sales, sales are the like 99% of the reason that PyCon and Janemba and uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Kid Buu uh, top gross, right? Just because the yeah. sales are so good in preparation for the anniversary, yep, yep. New Year's. Uh, they're just, they, yeah, when you hit that money time slot, like at the very, very end of the year, going into the new year, that's usually a unit that's going to top gross almost regardless of who it is, just because so many people are preparing for the anniversary and trying to get their stones up. So. When you put them in a weird slot like this, where you know we're we're still kind of in that post uh, anniversary hangover, where everybody dumped all their stones out, and uh, you know we had Saiyan Day that's recently uh, came through with Majin Vegeta, obviously being, obviously being way more exciting than uh, Raditz. Uh, he's kind of like it's it's just a it's a domino effect of all things, right? Bad time slot, not very good sales, bad unit, uh, well bad kit, not very exciting character, and uh, yeah, I think that like Joe said, this is a good thing going forward, maybe because. It might up the standards and say like, yeah, we we have competition and we can't let this kind of thing just fly every time that we uh, release a, a new unit. The other thing I guess you can toss out there too, you know, Dokkan has a direct competitor in Legends, and so Legends could take advantage mm -hmm. of it. If Dokkan's going to release a crap character, everyone's going to go to Legends and summon for the you know fusion that's coming out or whatever, right? So um, that's the mm -hmm. other thing: keep the pressure on and and like they got to keep their game going. They can't just get lazy with stuff. Yeah, that's everything that we have to say about the new Dokkan Fest Raditz and how this release could impact the game in a positive way or maybe a negative way. Uh, at the, you know, we we're all we're all hoping that this helps in going forward. Everything it makes everything better, but that might not always be the case. So uh, I want to thank you guys for your time and thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed. Uh, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on everything that Five Nine is doing over here. We've got a lot of good stuff coming down the line. Like I said, thank you for watching. Have a good day, guys.